Hi, I'm Samantha from Nature's Health, and today I'm going to show you how we make our homemade yogurt. So to start, this simple process is you need yogurt and milk, a source of heat, and then a consistent temperature for time. This takes some time. So what I'm going to use here is five cups of our last batch of yogurt. So when I first started this process, I just used a store-bought yogurt, but I used a, a, a brand that was organic. I actually used this brand, Organic Bio, and it, it's a very active type of yogurt. So that's why I use that. So I would use four to six cups of that yogurt to start. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking this milk and I'm going to put it in the pot and I'm going to put it on a very low heat. So I would put it heating at two or three on my stuff on my stove top here. And I would be stirring it every few minutes to make sure it evenly heats. And this can take about a half an hour because you don't want to heat it too fast. And so when I looked on the internet on what the temperature was to raise it to, um, it says 180 Fahrenheit. I actually don't use a thermometer, but today we did buy one. So I will check the, uh, the temperature to see if that's actually the right temperature that I've been doing it at. Um, but the way I t detect when my, um, when my yogurt is, sorry, when my milk is heated to the right temperature to add the starting, starting yogurt, And once it is at that temperature, I would put the lid on and then I would put it in my stove with the oven light on and I would leave it overnight. So right now it's 7.45 p.m. I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to put it in the oven with the oven light and I'm going to leave it overnight. And then in the morning, it will be yogurt and I would transfer it into my storage jars and I would put it into the fridge. So what you'll see when you put it in the fridge, I'll show this part of the video as well, um, but you will get some separation and you will just pour that off the liquid. But yeah, that's pretty much the process. Um, the one thing you have to do to start is you need to bring your milk and your starter yogurt to room temperature. So this has been sitting on the counter for three hours now, like out of the fridge and we let it put it on the counter for three hours just so it's not like cold and then heating it. But yeah, so my recipe here, I'm going to be using four liters of milk, of whole milk or whole organic milk and five cups of starter yogurt. This is from our last yogurt batch. So you can use four to six cups of yogurt. So I'm just going to start by adding the whole milk into the pot. Okay, so here I've just been adding the milk, here the whole milk, into the pot. So I cut off the edge and I put it in. So we choose to use whole milk here because it is the least processed milk. Um, it has the healthy fats in it. So now that I have all the milk here in the pot, I'm going to put this in place and I'm going to put it here on about two to three here. And then I'm just going to leave this. So I normally just go and do something else and then every um, so probably in 10 minutes, I'll check it and I'll give it a stir. And then after that, every five minutes, um, just to ensure that it's heating evenly and without I use a wooden spoon. And so it's always just really important since this is a fermentation uh, process to make sure everything's clean, um, to make sure that nothing gets contaminated. Okay. Okay. So now the, the milk has been heating. So as you want to see here, it, there's a film. So when you scrape it, it all comes in one. And so I'm actually just going to take this off and discard into the sink. Okay, so I'm going to take that film off and I'm going to whisk this really good and I'm actually going to check the temperature. And it's 180, so it's 184. So that's what the um, internet was saying to get it to. So at about 180 is when you start to see the film come across. So that's when you know the temperature is has been heated enough to sterilize it. Okay, so now I'm going to whisk this really good to make sure it's um, a consistent, the, all one consistency. But now you need to let the temperature cool down to what the internet was saying was 115. Um, so that is at the temperature where you can put your thumb and it, your finger in and it's just a little too warm to enjoy. So the idea is it, you need to make sure it cools down to this temperature because if you added the yogurt in at this point, it would kill bacteria. So now it's just a waiting game. So we'll, we'll be right. We're trying to bring the temperature down now because it was heated up to 180. Um, so we don't use air conditioning, so it took a little bit longer than expected, uh, since it's humid tonight, but now that it is brought down to temperature where I can put my finger in pretty comfortably and I t test the, yeah, like 120. So, and it said on the internet about 110 to 115. So I'm going to stir this just a little bit more to make sure it's completely, uh, the same consistent temperature. And then I'm going to add in my starter yogurt. Okay, 
it's time to incubate this baby in the oven. Um, okay, so now I'm going to close it up and place it in the oven. And we'll see you in the morning. <laughs> okay, so now it's the morning after, so we're gonna check on the yogurt. So come on over. Here she is. Still warm. Da -da -da! Yogurt! So now um, you transfer it into storage jars. So I just store it in like some big two liter jars and little jars. And then when you put it in the fridge, it will set even more. So that's like, obviously this is warm, right? So it's a little bit more watery, but it will set and it will get harder. And then, yeah, you're ready to go. You're ready to consume your homemade yogurt and just ensure that when you, um, you keep some leftover for your next batch. So storage for your homemade yogurt is obviously best in the fridge, um, in an airtight container. Um, you can store, it's, most of the people say it's best consumed within three days because that's the optimal, um, like flavor. However, if you like a more sour yogurt and more tart yogurt, that will increase with time. So we store ours like two weeks. Normally I make this batch every once every two to three weeks. So it, it's obviously uh, has a long shelf life in your fridge and um, will become more active with time as well. Hey, so some of the things that we've learned um, making a million batches of yogurt and a lot of failed batches of yogurt um, are that the incubation period of time is really important. So you would want to have it for at least eight to 10 to 16 hours. Um, or what like a lot of um, sources say um, and then a consistent temperature so that oven temperature is really important um, with the light we've also tried it where you preheat the oven to the lowest setting and then put it in but honestly it made it too hot so I don't know some people find results with that but we find the best result with just the oven light on and then cooling it down after you reach um, so you heat the milk up to 180 you skim off the top then you want to rapidly cool it down to 115 and 110. So um, if you have air conditioning, usually that's not an issue. If it's cool outside, you can kind of just bring the pot outside. But I mean, we were having trouble. We had a couple bad batches because of the humidity in the house, um, just because there's no air conditioning on. So we found that the best way to do it is with the ice bath. So you fill your sink with water, put a piece, some pieces of ice, and then put the pot right in, and then it can, and you stir it, and then it brings the temperature down. Um, so yeah, it's just really important to understand that you're working with bacteria here. So um, obviously if you overheat the milk, if you overheat the yogurt, it's going to curdle, like you're going to have a bad batch. So um, some people might think like, oh, I don't want to do such a large batch my first time. Um, and you can try it with less, like halving this recipe and try it with less. However, um, the more milk, the easier it is for it to keep itself warm. So that's something that we we found as well. Plus we go through yogurt, like it's nobody's business. So um, yeah, that's some things that I've started to learn. Um, obviously don't get discouraged, <laughs> try, try again. Um, but yeah, once you get it, you'll get it. So, and then you'll find how easy it is and how much money you'll save. And, um, like it's even more eco-friendly when you can get the big cartons of milk. Um, like when they go on sale, you don't even have to use the bags. Um, so yeah, those are some things that I wanted to say about like troubleshooting your yogurt situation. If you do have a bad batch, um, you can try to find a way to use the soured milk. So it's not necessarily it's gone bad because there's still like active bacteria in it. It just didn't get that right thing to set it into yogurt. So um, you can, uh, it's more, tastes like more like kefir in that sense. So you can try to, um, I don't know, blend it into smoothies. You can make it into sour cream, like a more liquidy sauce. Um, we, we, we've also tried to, like, we're gonna try to, we have a bad batch in the fridge right now. It's not necessarily that bad, it's just not that creamy for yogurt. So um, we're gonna blend it into like more of like a frozen yogurt situation. So we'll keep you posted on that. But yeah, that's some things that I've learned.